Well, hello ladies and gentlemen. Uh, experimental method is the subject. I'm going to assume that you have studied the little bean seed experiment and have also uh, studied those five steps that came from your textbook as far as the uh, logical flow of a scientific investigation. So now we're going to try to put the two of them together. Right, and we'll move fairly quickly through that. What's the first box of the first step in the logical flow of a, of a scientific investigation? Well, it is observation. Observation. And so, anyone that uh, might do that experiment with bean seeds, you've been looking at bean seeds for a while. And uh, maybe even trying to grow bean seeds. And so, uh, based on that observation, then the second box is question and where does the question come from? It comes from the observations. Based on the observations a question may come to mind. Now looking at the experiment about bean seeds, hmm, what question could have come possibly come to someone's mind that might lead to that experiment? I've got to get got it sitting right out here in front of me here. So what, uh, what question might come to mind uh, that might possibly lead to this experiment. Well, it has to do about bean seeds, light, and germination, right? And so, uh, I'm going to suggest this possible question. Do bean seeds, do bean seeds, bean seeds, let me get this here in a minute, do bean seeds require light for germination. Do bean seeds require light for germination? That is a possible question that might lead to this experiment, this little simple experiment. What's the next uh, step in the logical flow of a scientific investigation? Well, it is the hypothesis step. And why is the hypothesis the next logical step? Why does a question possibly lead to a hypothesis? Very simple. A hypothesis is a possible answer to the question. It is a statement, a statement that is a possible, a possible answer to the question. statement. It's not a question, it's a statement that's a possible answer to the question. Alright, and so um, and so does that statement need to be correct? Does it need to be correct? Now if we already knew the answer, there's not much point in doing this, right? But there is something that must be true of this hypothesis that we come up with. It must be something. What is that? Well, uh, it must be testable. It must be testable. In other words, there must be a way of doing measurements, etc., in which you can actually test the hypothesis. Now, what hypothesis might be a, a possible answer to this question? Well, there's at least two, I think, and uh, I think we can guess what they are. The question again is, do bean seeds require light for germination? Well, <laughs> there's two possible answers, yes or no, but we want to make a statement, right? And so the statement would be, uh, possibly the simplest one, is bean seeds require light for germination. Of course, an equally uh, valid uh, hypothesis would be what? Bean seeds do not require light for germination. Well, I'm going to write the shorter one here. Uh, bean seeds, bean seeds require light for germination. Alright, that is the possible answer to the question. Bean seeds require light for germination. The next logical step in the, lo in the, uh, in the flow of a scientific investigation is the what? It is the experiment. The experiment. And why is an experiment the next logical step in the logical flow of a scientific investigation? Well, an experiment has a very simple mission in life. An experiment does what? 
it tests that hypothesis. It tests the hypothesis. And so, uh, that's what it does. But not just any old thing will do in the way of an experiment. Uh, an experiment must meet three criteria. In your Did You Get It questions at the end of this module, um, there is the question. What is the question? Uh, what are three characteristics of a well-designed scientific experiment? And believe it or not, that rinky-dink little experiment about bean seeds meets all three of these criteria. Okay. So, what are they? Well, let's look at the little bean seed experiment and see what they are. Well, first of all, there's two different groups, right? There's two groups. An experiment should have two groups for comparison. And uh, those troops are, two groups are called the experimental group. Experimental. What's the other one called? Well, it's called the control group. Experimental and control. What's the difference? Uh, the difference is simply this. The experimental group gets something that the control group doesn't get. It gets the treatment, so to speak. So which one of these in this little experiment uh, about bean seeds, light and dark, which one's the experimental and which one's the control group? Well, I think maybe the sunlit room is the experimental group. It's getting something, sunlight, that the other one's not getting. So the dark room would be the control group. What else must be true about an experiment? Well, um, the experiment uh, involves 12 bean seeds. Gee, why so many? Why not just one in each group? Well, does every bean seed in the uh, does every bean seed in the package always germinate? No, it might be a defective bean seed. And uh, when you're experimenting with people, do like with a drug or something, does every person react exactly the same to a particular drug? Do some people that uh, get the make-believe placebo, do they get well? They do. It's, it's, uh, so you've got to have a lot of people to compensate for that. You have to have what might be called an adequate sample size. An adequate sample size. And so uh, uh, medical experiments typically with involving people invo typically involve several hundred folks uh, just to compensate for what you can't control. You can't control for all the individual differences uh, between individuals. And the only way you can, can control or compensate for that is have a large sample size. Finally, the last step says the experiment was repeatable. And, uh, and so who might want to repeat the experiment? Well, I think the original experimenter better, better double check, make sure it's going to happen more than once. And then who else might want to repeat an experiment? Who else would want to spend the money? Well, somebody who reads your publication might say, Wow, no way. No way that could possibly happen. I'm going to try it myself. And you have to publish with your results something called Materials and Methods so that somebody you know, who knows how to do that type of thing could uh, repeat their experiment if they, uh, if they care to spend the time and money. Final box. Experiment's over. What's the final box? The conclusion box the conclusion. So, the conclusion is uh, based on the results of the experiment and there are two philosophically correct conclusions. You might think, well, we'll say the hypothesis was right or wrong. Well, sometimes there's other experiments later that show uh, you know, maybe some, some something that maybe is a little more complicated, but at least you can say this. At the end of an experiment, this hypothesis and this experiment, this experiment shows that that hypothesis, hypothesis was either supported or not supported. Supported or not supported. And so, a philosophically correct conclusion would be this. The hypothesis was supported. Or just the opposite. That hypothesis was not, was not supported. And so there you have it. Before we leave, though, let's think about this. I got the experiment right here. Uh, our hypothesis was bean seeds require light for germination. Based on this experiment, is that hypothesis, was that hypothesis supported or not supported? 
do bean seeds require light for germination? I'd say probably that hypothesis was what? I hope you think it was not supported. Why is that? What does this say? I think it says bean seeds germinated in both rooms. It surely did. And so I guess, I guess light is not required for germination. And there you have it. All right. Thank you. That's it for now.